And here, the NXP, we have the IMX8 right here. Hello, so who are you? Hey, I'm Arnaud van den Bosch. I'm in charge of the Idotemix in terms of business and marketing for the automotive application in Europe. So the IMX8 is a very exciting new chip, right? Yes, exactly. And here, the one of the example that we're showing here, you, is not only doing everything about infotainment and cluster and here, you can have them in the neural networks, but it on it directly. And here it's really for the new technology when we're looking at artificial intelligence and not to have something which is pre-programmed. So of, neural networks, uh, so it's like uh, AI kind of stuff? Exactly. So we have learned the uh, GPU to recognize a few signs. I mean, and we just, I mean, send them in 40,000 signs. And from there afterward, they can recognize any type of signs directly. And what we're trying to do is to reach at least 97% of uh, uh, of accuracy. So actually you have three IMX8, right? Um, you have IMX8, 8M, and 8X. What's yeah. the difference? So the 8 would be really for the e-cockpit solution that we'll show you just afterwards. The 8M is really much more for the uh, application and consumer, and the 8X will be in the lower end devices, much more in the digital uh, display, uh, digi uh, digital radio system. And right here, we're looking at the 8, which one? The 8 quad mic, the biggest device that we'll, uh, that we'll be able to, uh, to reach. Is that 8X? That's 8. 8. So that's the biggest one right there? Yeah. Um, with all these functions right here. This is a 64-bit arm, right? Yes. Uh, let's go. Uh, 64 bit, what are the cores you have? So, what we have here, which, I mean, we have 4 A53, 2 A72, plus we have accelerators up to 128 gigaflops in terms of GPU, we have VPU, and up to, I mean, we are decoding H.265. One of the key things that we're showing here is we can have four displays, 1080p, I mean, running concurrently. Here we have two different domains, a safe domain for the cluster and an infotainment domain with all you have, your like Android or whatever, you've got a CarPlay. So two separate domains, which is very important in the car because you cannot mess up from the application, I mean, compared to everything when you're driving, so all the information, driver information from the cluster, which is ACL compliance. So you have uh, on one SOC, you have two hardware separate. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's one of the beauty of the thing because if one crashing, it should not have any impact on the one which is not the infotainment domain, but the one which is the driver information. And what one of the key things that we're doing here is a full separation of the system with really a clear separation in the domain, which makes the, the, the full system very safe. And so there's no need to have two SOCs. You can just have exactly. one, do we everything. Have one SOC that will do the entire cockpit inside the car. As I said, here you've got the infotainment system, you've got the HUD, you've got the cluster here, and here you got the map. For example, I stop the route. So this is your infotainment system. You got the route. Here you got your cluster, and in the hood you got exactly the same information that's going here. And you can still play some infotainment. Everything, all the four displays are totally independent and driving independent information to uh, the four displays. So it's not just the exa core. There's also four Cortex M4 in there. So you have two Cortex M4 inside. So it's two. four A53. 2A72 and 2 Cortex M4. And the Cortex M4 can be used in different ways, either for a safety mechanism or for additional like audio pre-processing, additional cameras, uh, feeds or whatever. Let's go back to uh, just right here. Uh, so you can see the different process that's uh, And also that, you know, it's it's been trained. It can recognize the stop sign. So stop sign here, we, we, we just train them to recognize uh, stop sign, but it's not only that. The other thing that we want to do is, for example, face recognition, uh, drowsiness detections, all these type of specific algorithm that will not have any safety impact, but still giving some information to the driver that something's happening. So it's really in addition to all the safety domain that we are developing on some other uh, elements within NXP. And if I look at here again, uh uh, it says uh, 128 gigaflops. That's a very powerful GPU. Is Vivante? Yes, that is a Vivante. The GC7000 Vivante, which is a new one, and which we are giving. I mean, not only. I mean, what we have done here is we have separated in two GPUs. So we have two different GPUs, and that's what we're showing here. Is one GPU we're really doing all the neural network, and other GPU is doing all the different uh, camera feed. Well. Um, so there's also GPU compartments. Exactly. And you have a, a 
do you have all kinds of power management in terms of you can choose to only power some chips and not others? Exactly. So what we're doing? So exactly, we'll have uh, different power domain on the chip. For example, the Cortex will be different power domain compared to the GPU. So you will be able to scale the power of the GPU independently to the CPU. What you will be able to do, for example, if you want to shut down everything and just keep the Cortex M4 in the low power mode, you can do that. Which means that the system you can put in sleep mode the entire system and wake up very, very easily with a very low power consumption. Is that exclusive to you? Nobody else has done this before? I mean, it's something that we are working a lot uh, on this low power mode because when you have this type of system, especially when you start to separate them in different domains, you need to have this type of different power modes. And that's very, very important. That's one of the unique features that we have these two different domains totally separated. Totally separated? How do you power each one? How does it, how did it connect? And you say, I only want to power M4 yeah. and nothing else. How yeah. does that work? So you have a small system controller unit that would make this, this type of decision, which is pre-programmed. And the customer have also access to program it in order to make sure that the different assignments, for example, the peripherals are assigned to the different cores, as well as the part, uh, partition, partitioning of the memory. So we are partitioning the IOs, peripherals, as well as the memory. And afterwards, you have different ways to modulate that through a system controller. So maybe this one, this demo is maybe only using the A53, or maybe it's using the S72, but you can choose. Exactly. You can use some, you can use the other one. Or you can virtualize the Cortex-A, because uh, everything which has done with ARM Cortex has been pretty well done in terms of virtualization. So it's good to have kind of an hyper version on top of it in order to have good load of the balance in order to have a good power dissipation, also good power uh, consumption. And this is GPU compute on the, on the Vivante? And the GPU compute, so here what we want to do is really the GPU only is taking care of the, uh, the 3D. And after we have some additional 2D cores, which will do all the 2D effects, meaning the different layer that you are blending together, how you put them in a different area in the, uh, on, on the display. So this all the thing that we have a specific 2D course and the 3D course we only do 3D. If I look over here a little bit more, uh, it says this 4K H.265 encode, decode, right? Both? Decode. And uh, this 24 bits uh, audio, uh, lots of things people want to have. What kind of DSP do you support? It says uh, high performance DSP. So we have the DSP from uh, 10 silica. And this is, I mean, running at uh, 666 megahertz, which makes about 2.5 giga, uh, giga max available for audio post-processing, which is more and more important in the automotive domain because you can have active noise cancellation, which is running on it without any taking on uh, CPU uh, MIPS. And it says here, uh, full chip virtualization with hardware uh, isolation. Yes. What is that about? So that's what I was explaining for the other one. You can isolate two domains. You can have isolate the domain for the infotainment versus the one which is for the cluster, which is safe domain. And it will be physically separated because we'll have the two GPU, the two display processors, which are totally separated, on which you will not share anything in terms of domain. And each OS will address its own the GPU and its own display processor. So when you talk about this, you, you talk about automotive, but what else, uh, what, what else is going to be thing, the target? I mean, the thing that when you look at the health, health is yeah. very important because you will have some infotainment, but you need also a secure domain because you don't want to that, the infotainment domain to mess up with the healthcare of the people. So that's one of the key points that you will have. Any type of transportation in the, in the train or in the, in, the, in the plane, this also you need to have a safe domain versus an infotainment domain. Here, we're, another way to, to make it that we're showing here is, for example, you have a domain for everything about, I would say, um, neural network, but you don't want to have that, I mean, messing up with your another domain. So that's the type of thing that we want to do, is really when you need to have two separate domains running on a single SOC, all this type of application can be running on this type of uh, SOC. But it's big little? So it's, we have this A53 and A72 in a big little uh, possibility. And uh, heterogeneous multi... Multi-core, this is uh, with the, specifically when we have the M4. On this M4 you can free Arthos, Autosar, whatever, which will make, I mean, the low power mode versus the Cortex A53, F A72 that will do the high level OS. And is long-term support? Long-term support, as usual, automotive, 15 years on JVT, industrial, 10 years on JVT, as usual, that's what we're doing. So people hopefully will be watching this video in 15 years, and, and it's still, still going to be irrelevant. Still be irrelevant and still be supported with the, from our uh, support team. So when you're talking about self-driving cars and all that stuff, is this, uh, is this something else? So this is part of it. 
this is not the self-driving car because it's not an SL, I mean, it will not do any um, decision making, I mean, which will uh, really have an impact on the driving, but it will helping because, for example, it will take care of the image stitching thanks to the GPU that will do a very smart stitching of the image. And this stitch image will be passed afterwards to the vision coprocessor that will do all the analytics in order to take a decision at the end. So this is part of it, but just one single piece of it. And uh, what's next with IMAX 8? So um, you announced something, you showed it, and now uh, is the chip out? So for the Adot MX8, we'll have the, or, or this one, I mean, you can see it's working. We have the first sample. We have the new samples in the next few weeks. Everything is already in the fab, and that is happening right now. So within this year, we'll have all the different silicon ready, available for the customers. Next year will be all the qualification. The, and development boards and everything. everything will be available this year. Cool.